Hi, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video, I'm here to walk you through some of my favorite sound design techniques using only the built-in plugins and effects inside of Cubase to create your own modern trap drum sounds. Cubase is obviously a great choice for music production, but it's also a really great sound design environment because it has so many powerful features, tools, and functions inside of it that allow you to put your own spin on your favorite sounds or create your own from the ground up. So let's hop into Cubase and get started. All right, so before we dive into it here, I've cooked up this little beat just so you can hear the final result kind of in context. So let's take a listen to that and then we'll take a detailed look at how I made the drum sounds. As you can hear, it's a pretty standard modern drum sound, but with a few little twists on it that just make it pop out a bit more. A lot of the techniques I'm going to show you today are actually pretty easy to implement, and they apply to all sorts of different styles of music, so don't be afraid to take these ideas and run with them and make them your own. To begin, let's open up the kick drum here because I think the foundation of any good trap or modern production is a solid bass and a solid kick drum. As you can see here, I'm using this sampler track, and what I've got is actually just a standard 808, just a long boom 808. And this is a great way to make kick drums, because 808s that hit really hard really lend themselves well to making some very thumpy and heavy kick drums. Sampler track has a lot of different features we can utilize to make this into more of a kick drum sound, namely the pitch and amplitude envelopes. To begin, we want to shorten this up, so we'll click on this icon here to open the amplitude envelope, and then we'll drop our sustain down to zero, and drag it back to maybe about 100 to 150 milliseconds. This shortens the 808 sound significantly, making it more short and punchy like a kick drum, and to enhance that kicking, knocking feel, we just need to add a pitch envelope. Sampler track has this function as well, so we can just click on the envelope here above the pitch, and then raise this, and just tweak the amount here to taste. In my case, I went for about 23%, and just messed around with the timing of it until it felt right. Usually somewhere between 30 and 80 milliseconds works pretty well for this. After that, to cap things off here, I've just used the filter inside of sampler track. So I've got a 24 decibel per octave low pass, and just set the cutoff at around 1k, and added a bit of drive. There are several different types here that you can choose from, and I find tube is usually just a solid all-around choice, especially for heavy, hard-hitting drum sounds. Once you've set up your kick drum inside of the sampler track, it's really easy to make this hit a little bit harder with some basic processing. I think one of the best solutions to make drums knock a lot harder is actually Quadrifuzz, which is a multi-band distortion that's built right into Cubase. So on the low end here, I've got a little bit of tape, and I've really driven up the low mids here on tube mode. And you can experiment with the different available modes here, because they'll impart some different effects. And in some cases, one mode might sound better, and another mode might sound totally weak. So you kind of got to do it by ear and experiment a bit. Since there's really not much high mid or high end information, I just left these alone, but you can always experiment with this, and I find things like the distortion or decimate modes up on the top can really make things have a nice sizzle and crunch to them. To finalize the kick sound here, I've gone in and just done some basic EQ touch-ups to bring in a little bit of maybe 60 hertz, and then taking out all this really low subby stuff just to clean it up so it's not eating up headroom in the mix. Then, just for a bit of added knock, I've boosted around 250 or thereabouts, and that's usually a nice low mid frequency that can add a bit more weight and thump without sounding overly boxy. You've got to be a little careful with it, so again, just play by ear, but adding a little bit of that low mid energy rather than solely focusing on the low end can really make things translate better. Another great way to enhance your kick drums is to layer them. So here, I've got an acoustic kick drum layer, and this is another sampler track. 
As you can see here in the amplitude envelope, I've shortened this up a little bit because this was a relatively long kick sample, and we really don't want long sounds here. We want short, tight, knocking sounds that just have a lot of punch to them. As you can see here, the sample itself is relatively short. There's just kind of a long tail, so I really just needed to cut this off, and everything else was fine as it was. However, when it comes to layering sounds, especially when it comes to low frequency content, you can really build up too much low end and eat up your headroom as well as just kind of blow out your sound system and it just kind of sounds like garbage. An easy way around this is to use the filter inside of sampler track, so I've used bandpass mode, and a bandpass removes both the high end and low end below that cutoff point. So this way we can tune this in kind of on the gritty, nice frequencies of the acoustic kick drum and not so much focus on the sub or high end content. So experimenting with the cutoff here, I found that about 200 hertz worked well, and I added a touch of resonance and a touch of drive. This adds a really nice, earthy, acoustic vibe to the kick without sounding overly synthetic and relying too much on the low end. Then from here, I just blended this into taste. You can see it's relatively quiet, but without it, we have this kick drum. And once we bring it in, we have this. So as you can hear, it just adds a nice bit of earthy, organic character to the kick sound rather than just being so overly subby and low. When it comes to creating snare drum sounds inside of Cubase, my go-to is always Groove Agent because it has a couple really cool features you might not know about. Groove Agent is actually really powerful under the hood once you get familiar with it, and one of my favorite features is the ability to go to the main page here and change the mode to layer. As you can see here, I've got two different samples, a rim hit and a shaker sound, and as I'm sure you guessed, layer mode means I can layer these two sounds together on a single pad. Where things start to get really interesting inside of Groove Agent is if you go up here to the upper right, and you'll see this is normally on pad mode. But if you click this pad button, it will change over to selected mode, and what this means is you can edit these individual samples on the same pad so that they can move around and get out of each other's way and do some other cool stuff that makes your life a lot easier. When it comes to layering sounds, I find some kind of mid-range typical snare type element, in this case a rim hit sounds pretty solid, and then layering that with something like a shaker, a hi-hat, or even a found sound Foley percussion sample can just bring a bit more life to the snare drum rather than just being another 808 style snare. To enhance this further, you can go in and adjust the individual elements of this when you're on selected mode. So if we go into the amplitude page here, you'll see that my rim is left untouched, but if we go to my shaker, I've changed the amplitude envelope of this slightly. To get a better idea of what I've done, we can go over here to show the waveform sum, and you'll see I've taken off just a little bit of the attack of the shaker sound here. What this does is it gets the shaker sound out of the way of the initial transient of that rim, so then we really get that heavy, clean click of the rim sound, but then we get that nice airy tail from the shaker sample. From here, another really great trick is to go over to the sample tab and then change the key on delay. So this will just shift one of the layers away from the other. And this is especially handy if you've got multiple layers. So if we had a hi-hat sample in here just to add some nice metallic tone, we could add this with a bit of delay so that it's out of the way of the transient and a little bit of that body. And then we just get that on the tail end. Now let's move on and take a look at some of the percussion elements here, like those pitched hat rolls and the pitched snare rolls. This is actually really easy using sampler track. The cool thing about sampler track is it makes it really easy to do these pitched rolling effects because it's designed to play back like a sampled instrument, but we can use this to our advantage by just gliding across different notes in the piano roll and we get those cool pitch roll effects. If we take a look at this second hat here and take a closer look in the piano roll, you'll see that I'm actually moving it around across the keys and that's how I'm getting those different pitch roll effects. I've also done something very similar with this second snare layer here, so if we open this up, you'll see that I'm moving it up and down across the keyboard. And that was once again how I'm getting those cool pitch snare roll effects, and it's really, really simple to do with the sampler track. Another really great trick to enhance your hats and get that nice, cool, modern, liquidy sounds is to use the phaser instead of Cubase with a very, very slow rate, a high width, and maybe a medium feedback. Here we can enhance the spatial as well, so this way we're getting a nice wide stereo hat sound, and then we'll blend the mix into taste. To further enhance that modern liquidy moving morphing shifting sound, you can also use an auto pan. So I've got one here that's just really really slow at 0.7 hertz, and the width is not quite all the way up. This way it's just kind of moving around your head, and it's never quite the same. Even though it's the same pattern looping, it feels a bit different every time. 
So using different tools like phaser, auto pan, flanger, even some of the guitar effects inside of Cubase, this can just add a slow modulation and movement to things to make them not super consistent and just make things sound a bit more interesting. When it comes to the sampler track and hats, I think a filter is especially important, and I find that to get the best results for these really modern, tight, ticky hi-hats, it's about just using a high-pass filter with a good deal of resonance, maybe a bit of drive as well, but you want a pretty high cutoff point. And then from here, you might go over to the Amplitude Envelope page and shorten things up, and maybe even shave off a little bit of attack just so you're getting more of a swish rather than a straight-up tick on the hi-hat. Finally, to cap this video off, I wanted to share with you guys one of my favorite sound design techniques, which is utilizing convolution reverb on different sounds. Convolution reverbs are really interesting because they use a sampled impulse response, but we can use this to our advantage by bringing in our own impulse response, but not necessarily using the response of an acoustic space. Instead, we can use other samples or found sounds to create really unique sounds by imparting the sonic characteristics of one thing onto another. It's almost like a vocoder in a way, just a bit different. Let's solo out the drum bus here and take a very careful listen to each of the individual sounds because you'll hear that there's just a little bit of something extra on it that you maybe can't quite place your finger on, and that is the magic of the convolution reverb. Cubase actually features a built-in convolution reverb called Reverence, which you've probably used before, but you can import your own samples into it to make these really unique sounding drums. Here, I've got Reverence open on my acoustic kick drum layer, and what I've brought in is an 808 hi-hat sample. If we bypass this effect and take a listen to the kick drum, it's not really the most interesting sound in the world, but if we bring in this convolution reverb using a hi-hat sample, we end up adding a little bit more of an interesting texture and character to the sound. To further adjust this, you can experiment with the size and the wet-dry mix. The size in particular can really be interesting because it ends up stretching the sample, which can change the pitch and the color that it's going to impart on the sound. Then you just blend it in a little bit, usually 10 to 30% works well, and you can bring just a bit of extra life to your sounds. It's a lot of fun to experiment with. Here on my snare drum, I brought in another 808 hi-hat sample mixed in about 50% and I've cranked the size to give it a really low pitch and you'll hear that it adds this kind of nice metallic body to the snare. And without the reverence being active, it sounds like this. Finally, on those steady eighth note hi-hats here, I brought in a recording I did of some silverware in my kitchen. I think this was me just clanking a fork against a spoon or something like that. Since this is a metallic sound, it lends itself well to other metallic sounds, and it can also be interesting to use metallic sounds on things that don't have any metallic character to them to give them a bit of metallic character. To trim this up here, I just activated the impulse trimming function and just scaled this around until it fit a bit better. Then I used the time scaling and size functions and blended this in pretty heavy, and you'll hear it just adds this little bit more earthy response to these hats and makes them sound a bit more realistic rather than just being really bright, brittle, 808 style hats. So as you can probably tell, Reverence is a very powerful sound design tool that can really make the difference between a sound that's maybe just a bit flat and something that sounds really interesting. When it comes to making really heavy modern drum mixes, I find one of the best things is bus processing for drums. Here I've got a tube compressor and a quadrifuzz, so I just created a group track and sent all of my drums to that and then they go into these two things and this really just makes the drums jump out at you in the mix. For the tube compressor, I brought up quite a bit of drive and left the character at about 50% and mixed it in 100% wet. If we take a look at the meter here, You see, I'm not going for too much compression. I'm only going for about 2 to 4 dB of gain reduction just to add a bit of glue to the overall drum mix. The real secret weapon is this final stage of quadrifuzz here. Since this is a multi-band distortion and we can use different modes on each band, this lends itself really well to just enhancing some of the weight of the drums and making them punch. On the bottom here, I've got tape not driven up too hard, I've got tube here on the low mids driven up about halfway, distortion on the high mid band, and then another tube on a different mode here on the very top band driven in a mm, little bit tastefully, not too aggressive, but not nothing either. 
If we disable these inserts, you'll hear that the drums sound fine, they just don't really have that nice, modern, solid feel to them. And we'll bring it back in here. So just taking that little bit of extra time to create a drum bus and add a little bit of bus processing like compression and distortion can really make your drums sit well together and hold hands and play nice. And I think that wraps everything up for this video, so thanks for watching and hanging out with me for a bit. For more information and to learn more about Cubase, be sure to subscribe down below. And for more information and all things Cubase, you can head over to Steinberg.net.